Welcome to Elite at level. Proof is in the poison. This is the second video I'm doing in this series, which is to demonstrate the uh, capability or effectiveness of the Ginger Spice Caster Healer tankish build on a first life tune. This is a brand new tune I made uh, just the other day, Scary Spice, and um, I'm level 6 right now. And I'm sitting at 100, I'm unbuffed right now, just ship buffs. 153 hit points, 505 spell points, 28 armor class, but that's going to go up a little bit once I cast um, Spider Skin. And for gear right now, I want to go over what the gear set looks like uh, for this tune around this level. Um, I have some crafted stuff that's just about the best you can do for this level. I have resistance for goggles, uh, plus five skirmish leather. This is really important if you're crafty. You may have never really paid attention to this. You want to make sure that you get the highest minimum level kind of like armor, for example, or shield, for example. Um, you don't you don't want to just use like at this level at level six. You don't want to use like a basic leather item and just keep crafting that. You want to get the skirmish leather, which you can see is says absolute minimum level four, and this. If you compared this armor, the plus five version of the skirmish leather, to a plus five version of regular leather, this is actually two AC higher. So you definitely want to go with the skirmish. And then there are higher, um, I forget what they're all called, but there are, are higher level versions. There's a level 10 version, uh, and I think like a level 16 version too that has just a different name. And then the shield as well, I'm using the dark wood, a dark wood blank to craft onto and that's going to be one AC higher than if it was just a regular heavy shield. Uh, moving along, I do have a three piece uh, chrono set going on right now. I'm just wearing that for level five and six. After that I'm going to be wearing some Kanith uh, challenge items. In fact, I already got my farming the challenges. In fact, the next video I'm going to do is going to be to show you how you can solo one of those, uh, some of those challenges. I already got my Breakers of the Wind ready to go for level 7. I've uh, got Scorched Bracers, Ring of Elemental Essence, still using that till next level. Uh, crafted a Feather Falling with Melee Alacrity 10%. Charge Gauntlets. Now the reason why I'm only going to be using these for a couple levels is this set is not as attractive as it used to be because um, you know, when this stuff came out, having plus 3 stat items at level 5 was harder to come by than it is now. They lowered the minimum levels for the stat items, so uh, even with the set bonus, it's not really as good as you can craft for yourself, even at those levels, but definitely by like level 7. Uh, got a Magi Ring, plus 100 spell points, Fortification 75%, Con plus 4, this is just some junk I found, um, just nothing better to put in the trinket slot, and then Wisdom plus 4 Necklace, and for the weapon, I'm using plus four acid flame touch iron scimitar that I crafted. And I don't, I have the new ship boss, but I don't have the old one, so I don't, for example, have the 30%, the greater acid resist, which is huge in this quest. If you have access to that, I highly recommend getting it. A lot of acid damage here, a lot of casters, a lot of casters uh, throwing Mel's acid arrow at you. So if you have access to greater acid resist, get it. Now, there is sort of the newer version of that, uh, the old version is still available. But the new version is the Shrine to the Devourer, which gives plus 5 guild bonus to Acid Resist, and then 15% guild bonus to Acid Absorption. So that's going to be good, uh, but I decided not to pick up the Greater Acid Resist just for the purposes of this video. Um, you want to make sure you have lots of uh, Cure Light wound, or excuse me, cure Critical Wound Spots. I have a couple hundred stacks here. This is your primary way to heal yourself at this level. It saves on using Spell Points you can use your spell points for offensive casting. Also, you want to have wands of Cure Serious Wounds at this level so that you can heal your party members if you want to do that, but also to heal your dog as well. I can't use potions on your dog, but you can use the, uh, the wands. Now, I'm not going to be using my wolf for this video because he is just going to get tore up by, by all the acid damage and die, and I don't want to lose the spell points and hit points because of the wolf dying, it's just not necessary. Mm -hmm. 
also the spell selection at this level, um, and as well as the enhancements. Now, I've worked all the way up to the SLAs for Call Lightning, Creeping Cold, and Produce Flame, and then I have the first tier of Springs Resurgence, as well as the, the first Wisdom. <clears throat> I don't have any of my racial enhancements, I decided to go straight for the SLAs, I thought that would be more beneficial on a first life tune. And for spells, I also have the regular version of Call Lightning and Creeping Cold, but I'm primarily going to be using the SLA, because I don't have a lot of spell points to burn. So this build so far is not going to be, you know, too much different than than any druid caster at this level. One difference might be that a, that a straight caster might just be using uh, like a quarter staff, for example, uh, where I'm doing sword and board to help with the AC, and I'm making sure that I have you know, the highest AC armor I can for this level. So couple of the feats that I have right now that maybe a stray caster would have would be like toughness and augment summoning. I like augment summoning because it makes the wolf tougher and your summons tougher, which are big helpful, which is a big help at, the, at lower levels. Um, but I will be swapping out augment summoning right around I think level 12 or 15. So a stray caster might have, you know, instead of those might have mental toughness uh, or maybe even mental toughness and improved mental toughness. Uh, I do have Maximize going right now, only for the SLA versions of the spells. I have it turned off here. Uh, oh, actually, I didn't turn it off. I have it turned off for Produce Flame for the regular version, though. Produce Flame, uh, not worth maximizing. I, I wrote this in my write-up, but, uh, you know, maximizing and powering quicking it makes it ineffective to cast, or cost ineffective to cast. It's just way too expensive. But the unmaximized, unempowered version uh, does a few hundred. It can do a few hundred damage depending on the mob. You know, maybe like 150 to 250 damage. Uh, so, you know, if you want to just spam something simple, you can use that. But you know, have of course have maximize on the SLAs. Uh, there's my SLA up here for the produce flame, and then my SLA for the call lightning is here. So you can maximize the SLA versions, the spell-like abilities, for free. And with that fr that free maximize SLA version of Call Lightning, I'm able to one-shot pretty much anything at this level. So here's some casters coming out. And then I can hit some other ones with the Creeping Cold. Step back, let them come off cooldown. are going to need to heal yourself in this quest quite a bit with pots. It's a lot of, this is probably about the toughest the quest is going to get at this level. It used to be a, a funny message before you entered this quest, but it's not there anymore. It said, this quest is an extreme challenge. Are you sure you want to, sure you want to do it? <laughs> and you had to agree, but it's not so bad anymore. Now that you have the greater resist uh, ship buff available to you at this level, it makes it a piece of cake. I guess I don't, I'm not using that right now, but you definitely should if you can. And if you're worried about um, the acid damage, you know, you just don't have enough ship buffs or something, go and pick yourself up, like, a set of leather armor that has the acid proofing on it. That will help. Because that can give you, like, I think you can get 12% at this level, 12% absorption. So almost as good as the new ship buffs. So here, there's a bunch of traps. And it's a funny little trick they play on you because if you don't know it, you hit it and then you hear all the traps pop and it scares you and you jump back and you go right back into them and then you die. So here the trick is to just hit the lever and don't panic. The flames go right over you and all the spinny traps are out there. And then you just go around. That, uh, that set of traps 
along with all those casters and these right up here, these flame jets, have caused probably countless party wipes over the years. <laughs> So I'm primarily going to be using my spells for to take out the casters and for emergencies as well. Other than that, I'm going to be mailing everything else. You just don't have the spell point pool to be constantly casting as a druid for these lower levels. Ooh, wow. I did not take him out with a one shot. Healing yourself with cure serious pots, you, know, you can't do that rapid healing. So you want to make sure you don't get, let yourself get down too low. So just to show you produce flame, the SLA ma maximized for free, 95 damage, not bad. It's a little slow to reach its target, um, and it will, uh, it will hit a different target if it's between you and your intended target. So, you may have, if you were looking at the build, if you're considering, you may have looked at, you know, maximize on a druid at, at level 6, as I have indicated, and thought that's way too expensive. And you're right, it is. That's why I'm sticking with just the SLA version of the spells to maximize. And that's why I'm just basically just casting SLAs. Even at level 6, I've already got three of them. If you've never done this quest, you definitely want to run lean. Uh, you only got one shrine, and it's a very long quest.
I'll be using just the mana I started with for the most part. All I have for, to get extra mana right now is the Archivist Necklace, and then I have one lesser pot that I found. Yeah, I mentioned in my previous video when I was doing uh, Misery's Peak that if you can get your crafting levels at least to about level 25, then you can put those Masterwork Craftsmanship Shards on your items and reduce the minimum level by 2, which is really awesome, obviously. I just want to show you, you know, I haven't really done any crafting on this tune other than put a couple things, assembled a couple things that I moved over from a different tune, and then I've done some deconstructing too. But I'm only level 6, and I've already got my Arcane up to level 10. If to get that from 10 to 25, you can you can go to 25 in less than an hour, very very easily. So well worth the meager investment. And in fact, by the time you get to 25, you might get hooked and decide that you want to take it out a little further, which I would recommend. You know, if you like to TR, crafting is where some of the best gear is. This is a good XP quest. Uh, I actually ran this earlier as a dry run. I usually run a dry run before I do my videos just to work out any kinks and get a little more comfortable with it. So, like something like this, I haven't done this quest in probably a year. So I wanted to make sure I didn't forget anything. I got about 12,000 XP for it early, maybe 13,000. I won't get as much for it this time because it's the second time today. But even though it's a really good experience, it's, you know, if you consider experience for a minute, not really that great. Because it does take a while. But if you're with a group, I mean, you can blow through this. If, you know, you're with a decent group and everybody's got shit buffs. I mean, you can really smoke this. If you need to heal yourself faster than you can drink pots, then just alternate back and forth between your wand and your pots. And they'll be a little bit faster.
obviously you're seeing the casters doing a lot of lightning bolts. I don't have the greater uh, electricity resistance shrine uh, uh, buff going on right now, but I do have the you know the equivalent, the absorption and the five resist, like I showed you for the acid. It's an electrical version of that as well, which I think is the same one. Oh no, it's acid cold. There we go, Storm Reaver Memorial Monument. Plus five guild bonus that resist electricity and plus 15% guild bonus to absorb electrical damage. If you're making a new druid and you're trying to go caster, I think you really got to appreciate the fact that druids are a hybrid. You know, that you're going to be doing both meleeing and casting on any kind of druid. Even if you're going to melee druid, you're still going to be doing some casting. Obviously, you're going to be more focused on one or the other. Caster druid, obviously, going to, you know, be caster focused, but you're still going to be doing some melee. I mean, you don't have to, but the point I'm trying to make that is if you think you're going to make a pure melee druid or a pure caster druid, I think you're probably going to be disappointed. And I think that the druid is uh, best served, that you get the most out of it by doing both. Now on Ginger Spice, you know, I, and any, at any point on this build, you, you're never going to do a lot of <laughs> melee DPS. I mean, it's purely supplemental, and you know, obviously this build is is built for to be more tanky than it is to be uh, to have melee DPS. And so, for example, you know, if you're going the pure druid, uh, pure caster druid route, you know, and like I, I'm saying that I think you're going to be disappointed because if you play other casters, then you're just going to want to compare them to, you know, to your sorks and your wizards, and you will most likely be disappointed depending on your playstyle. Especially if you think you're going to make a nuker druid, because that's just not going to happen. You're gonna you're gonna build it, and then you're just gonna be disappointed in the DPS compared to you know Sork. When you're fighting oozes on Druid, just switch to Wolf form. And your weapons won't get damaged.
We're getting pretty close to the shrine. And the shrine's about the two-thirds point through the quest. Also not using, um, in addition to not using the wolf, I'm not using summons either because the acid is just going to tear them up too fast and be a waste of spell points. And like I said, you need to run really conservatively here on spell points because it is so long and you only have one shrine. Can drink pots in wolf form. Cannot use scrolls and wands. You can always use clickies, like the archivist necklace that I'm going to use right now, to hopefully get about 40 or 50 spell points. I do have uh, Vigor memorized as well. Uh, I've got Maximize turned off because um, I d it gets kind of expensive at this level. But if you, you know, in a normal quest where you have more shrines, mana is not of an issue, much of an issue, you can use uh, Vigor, the Vigor line, the single target line, pretty effectively as sort of upkeep healing. Maintenance healing.
somebody re you want to be real careful when running around here because this acid is going to do damage to you. And then they're casting on you, and uh, they can turn into a mess real fast. not paying attention in here. You can take damage really fast. And you can be dead before you know it. burned through 55 potions of cure serious wounds. so many stealthing mobs in this quest, you really gotta keep an eye on things. A lot of times, you know, you're just seeing those blips on the floor, but you can still cycle through them as combat targets. Like right now. Couldn't even see that caster other than the little red blip around his feet, but I could target him.
close to the end. The end fight is just around the corner. Still got 227 mana, so in really good shape. And it can be a pretty tough end fight. It can be over really fast too, but um, either way, actually, if you run in there and you know you're not prepared for it, there's a drow scorpion in there, and then uh, and that he's a red name, and then there's another red name. Apprentice or assistant. Then there's a hand fight right up there. Make sure you're fully healed. Iron Defender, some stealth casters, and then the Scorpion.
So 123 mana left. Piece of cake. Hey, thanks for watching. You have any questions about the build? Feel free to respond to my forum post on the DDO forums. And if you have any questions about any of my videos, feel free to respond on YouTube.